the Chargers are the team to me that if Justin Herbert keeps making – you know, steps forward and that defense stays healthy, uh, they're going to be right there and they're going to be some really, really good games. You are listening to KC Sports Network, the number one podcast network for today's Kansas City sports fans. With former players from your favorite teams, informed perspectives and former insiders, this is the place for you. KC Sports Network is proudly presented by Emprise Bank, your partner in Possible. What's up, Chiefs Kingdom? Welcome to another episode of Outside the Trenches. I'm DJ Kissel, joined by my good pal, Tucker Franklin, who's our fearless podcast producer here at KC Sports Network, and joined by my longtime podcast partner, Mr. Nick Leckie, who we just recently learned in his entire college career at Kansas State, twice being named an All-American, playing all interior offensive line positions, never gave up a sack, which pretty damn impressive for a Remington finalist. Uh, back in the day, and then also won a Super Bowl with the New Orleans Saints. Fellas, Tucker, how are we doing this evening? Listen, I'm doing great. 53-man rosters out, the initial 53-man rosters out. Um, we've we've passed up on that. That means we're just one step closer to actual football, for real football, football actually mattering. So it's a good day. I know this is a tough day around the league. Andrew Reid said that in his press conference. Uh, but there's hope for some guys to land on some new teams, get some new situations. Sometimes a change, of sce- a change of scenery is what these players need. So hopefully uh, we get to see that before these this this first week of games coming up soon. And I'm still learning all the uh, the, the intricacies of practice squad and veterans, and it's just it's mind blowing to me. It is. And remember. Just because you made it today doesn't mean you'll make it. It's like you got to wait till Tuesday. It's such a pain in the ass. This is like a <laughs> shitty weekend. <laughs> I've been there before. <laughs> I was going to say, what it, we've talked about this before. You've been podcasting together for years now. And mm-hmm. every time this time of the year, I'm going to ask you those questions. Just what do you yeah. remember being a former player who's gone through this, who, uh, you know, had your time and then i remember i've heard the story a million times about when you somebody gets drafted that plays your position you're like oh uh yeah. that's kind of the draft is, the draft is the first you know kind mm-hmm. of inclination and then you get to this point what do you remember about this time of the year just shitty just even when i was starting it was just shitty like because you know you're losing your buddies there's maybe a couple surprises you know where they, they make some some cap some cap adjustments type thing and and then also that you're not safe you're not safe until until Wednesday, like or Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern time, whatever, because it's like it, you're like you think you're fine going about your day. You have a normal weekend, your last free weekend. And then, you know, you see a, a, a tight end from another team gets cut and then you're the odd man out on the on your position group and first to go. So just because they want to pick up a tight end, they make room on a line. It's like, ugh. so, yeah, so it's it's weird if you're not a cemented starter, if you're a backup right now you're in jeopardy until Wednesday. Yeah. That I could, couldn't imagine you mentioned it and, and a coach talked about it, Tucker, what you said that you think you make it and you, it's not just these guys are fighting for spots. It's their families. Like where are they going to live? Where are their kids going to go to school? Like there's so many different things that when you start to humanize uh, what guys are going through that are in these situations, it just makes it that much more real and that much more difficult. And then you understand the kind of the ebbs and flows and the highs and lows uh, of being, you know, a player in the league and um, yeah, interesting time, but excited for this episode. And I know Nick's excited because uh, we've changed the format several different times here with uh, outside the trenches as we keep adding shows to the network here at KC sports network. Uh, but we're rolling with blind nil right now. So each show, if you're a first time listener, each of us bring a different topic uh, that the other two do not know about. And then we're going to spend five, 10 minutes talking about each one. But before we get to blind nil, I do want to uh, make a quick announcement. We actually, Tucker and I talked about it down in McAdoodles this past weekend uh, for our 21 questions. Thanks to our friends down there. But we do have a new presenting sponsor um, of Outside the Trenches, and that is Five Farms Irish Cream Liquor. Uh, it is a holiday distillery product. It is my favorite product that they have. I love the new bourbon. Uh, but Five Farms is by far um, the product that I have enjoyed of theirs the most for the longest amount of time. If you like coffee, hot chocolate, we're getting into the fall. It goes well with absolutely everything. So uh, make sure to check that out next time you're at the liquor store. It's just one of those good things to have uh, in your cabinet along with all your other stuff. But guys, let's get into this. Nick, let's start with you uh, with Blind Nil. What, sec- or what uh, section, what segment do you got for us today? So today, uh, and I know you guys are going to be, I don't know if it's disappointed or what that I'm not doing. I'm actually doing a football one. 
loyal listeners, if, if you know, I, I am really excited that we've decided to go all blind nil. Uh, I think it's awesome because we know so much about the Chiefs, and this is a good way for us just to play jazz. You know, someone brings mm-hmm. something and we riff on a topic and we kind of bounce ideas. Uh, it, the, the, the formatting can go way askew, whatever, which is what we like. And, and we hope that loyal listeners, that you guys love it because I love it. I, I think we found our voice amongst the myriad of podcasters because BG and I were podcasting before the Chiefs won a Super Bowl and before it was cool to podcast. <laughs> Don't you fucking forget that. <laughs> Sorry to why we have it. like five dollars in the swear jar already nick and we're not even like six minutes into this I'm show. Hyped. So i apologize I'm hyped if you're today. listening around kids i'm hyped today okay biggest threat to kc in winning the asc west like i said i'm getting into it it's season time no more who's gonna make the roster blah blah blah. practice blah 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 it's like game time I'm, let's go i'm gonna go first and just steal it tucker but it's the chargers uh, everybody says that national media say it all the time. The chargers stay healthy. If they don't go through what we've seen over the last several years where they have key injuries, the pickup of JC Jackson, getting Khalil Mack and obviously health is a huge thing for him. Uh, Justin Herbert taking another step. The fact they were able to re-sign and keep Mike Williams, uh, is an absolute weapon for Justin Herbert down the field. Uh, Keenan Allen can still get open. He can still make plays, but, uh, for me, it, it it begins and ends with the chargers. I think that the other two teams are good enough. And we've talked about this before Uh, Tucker. I know you and I have talked about this. I think the other two teams, I think the Raiders and the Broncos are obviously improved with the moves that they made. I think it makes them dangerous enough to go and spoil it for somebody else. I think they're good enough on any given Sunday to go out there and play well enough to beat the chargers in a big game that ends up costing the chargers something important. Uh, Same thing with the chiefs. Uh, The margin of error is lower. You have to play better against those teams. But for me, it's the chargers. If you know their coach and their coaching decisions on fourth down and different things that they do, that gets a little uh, weary sometimes, but uh, the chargers are the team to me that if Justin Herbert keeps making, you know, steps forward and that defense stays healthy, uh, they're going to be right there and they're going to be some really, really good games. Yeah, uh, I'm not going to say the Chargers because I want to do something uh, different for the sake of the argument for the sake of the podcast. So I'm going to say the Raiders. Wow. And, uh, I'm going to say the Raiders because of Devontae Adams, because of Derek Carr, um, the chemistry that already exists there. People don't really talk about Hunter Renfro all that often, but I can't remember who it was on the Pivot podcast who said that Hunter Renfro is one of those dogs. Like, uh, he's Ramsey. one of those guys. Yeah, Jalen Ramsey said he's one mm-hmm. of those dogs that he's a nightmare to cover. Um, and and I believe it. I think he's one of those guys that can be a real game wrecker at, at times like that. Listen, they've got people who actually know what they're doing in charge now. Um, well, Josh McDaniels might be a bit, bit iffy, but like. <laughs> They've got they've got people who are more competent than Mayock and, and Gruden. So like that's a little bit dangerous because that was always their downfall, right? Is they had people who you like, All right, well, they got Gruden here. Gruden's gonna figure out a way to do something here. Uh, but now they've got guys that are a little bit more well respected in the league. And I think that that's kind of uh, a, a little a, a sight that I don't like to see. You know, and I would like to say that this is not planned. This is truly blind nil, but this is where this is like the the the, the good one because I think legitimately Denver and, and did you mention Waller too? By the way, I love Waller. I didn't no. mention Waller. Yeah, I didn't no, mention Waller. Good. I mean, Jesus Christ, the dude's a beast. Uh, Denver, the the Randy Gregory thing. Um, what? I mean, and then then you got Russell Wilson. And remember this this Denver team last year was god awful, and they still gave. They, I mean, they still gave Kansas City all the business they could handle. Um, and then they they put it to Dallas, you know. So it's like this Denver team with a, a legit quarterback that you know who who felt probably feels like Mahomes is stealing his shine uh, as he gets older. He's going to play with a motivation, you know. He's going to beat this this young kid. Uh, he's going to show him what's up, you know. Even though people have compared you know uh, Mahomes to 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 Russell Wilson, you know, win a Super Bowl and never win it again, right? And it's like you know, so Mahomes is going to be juiced up, but. AFC West just became the, the most difficult conference, the most difficult division in the NFL. I, mean, I challenge you to think, you know, this will be – could we have four teams make yeah. it? Could, could the AFC West have four teams make it? That's, that's impossible, right? Is that statistical? Yeah. Get two wild cards. It. So, yeah, it has to be three, no. yeah. Yeah, all right. So, and they almost did it last year, for Christ's sakes. Yeah. Yeah. I do think it will come down to the last quarter of the season, though. I think all the teams could be in it late, just as long as there's no key injuries for any of the teams to to those points. I just don't think 
the depth of talent compared for the Broncos and the Raiders. I just don't think it matches up. But on any given Sunday, uh, you didn't even mention Darren Waller and yeah, run Hunter Renfro. And the, Tucker, my favorite thing about that podcast was how Ryan Clark had to do a complete 180 when he realized Man. that Jalen Ramsey was serious. Uh-huh. <laughs> he was he like, What are you talking out. about? He He's said like, No, entrance, seriously. Man? He's like, Yeah, entrance, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he thought I'm he like, was making a joke. Phone. He's like, no, seriously, that dude can play. Yeah. That, I mean, that dude was the, the legit, the reason why, you know, uh, Clemson beat Bama. You know, yeah. I mean, it's like, I mean, the yeah. dude's just been consistent, makes plays all the time. You know, it's like New England's like, why, how did he miss him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly. Right. Tucker, oh it's your turn for well, blind well, nil. Can, can I tell you about something, BJ, before uh, I get going on my blind nil? Yes. Okay. Well, I know that both you guys live in in the great state of Kansas. I sadly do not. And for people who also live in the state of Kansas, we have got an absolute deal for you. And that's because DraftKings Sportsbook is coming to the Sunflower State. It won't be long until you can bet on all of your favorite sports from the comfort of your own home. To celebrate, all new customers will receive $100 in free bets when you sign up using the code KCSN. Plus, one lucky customer will win a $100,000 free bet. That's right. DraftKings Sportsbook is giving you $100 in free bets just for signing up today. No deposit required. Soon you'll be able to bet on money lines, spreads, props, and more with one of America's top-rated sportsbook apps, DraftKings Sportsbook. Plus, you'll be entered to win a $100,000 free bet when you sign up. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and sign up with code KCSN to get $100 in free bets once mobile sports betting hits Kansas. Plus, one customer will win a $100,000 free bet. That's code KCSN only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Gambling problem? Getting help is your best bet. Call 800-522-4700. Must be 21 years or older. Physically present in Kansas. Eligibility restrictions apply. See terms at DraftKings.com slash sportsbook. Subject to regulatory licensing requirements, one per customer. One hundred dollars issued as four twenty-five dollar free bets. No purchase necessary for sweepstake. Void where prohibited. Ends first day. DraftKings is allowed to operate in Kansas. See terms at dkng.co slash ks. That's job, huge. That's big. That was a good one. See, I let Thank let your bookies you. know you out the door. I'm doing this. I'm doing this online now. Honestly, I spent. A- a good amount of time the other day looking through all the different like prop bets and just like random individual player bets lot. that you can find on DraftKings. I almost do the entire show around the fact that it's like plus 800 to for Patrick Mahomes to have a 500 yard game this season. And I was like, oh yeah, he could do that. I realized he's never done that in his career. I had no wow. idea until I looked it up. He's done like mm-hmm. 470 a couple times, 460. Uh, he's never hit 500 yards. So he went oh. bet 100, went 800. Oh, that's pretty good. Is that for the whole season? I like season long bets. It's like yeah, I, I despise season. betting the under because it could it could be, you know, you're like, you gotta wait the whole game, but the over, it's like you could hit in the damn second quarter and you're like, Yes, we're good mm-hmm. for the rest of the game. Like I yeah, love it. There's a there's a bunch of them like that. I was like, I could spend a lot of time in here and I will yes. spend a lot of time in there this season. So I uh, appreciate that. So if you yeah, if you go if you want to play some bets and you live in Kansas, please you use code KCSN helps us out. No kickbacks or anything like that. We just, they like to know that people are paying attention uh, to what we're doing here. Well, you got to jump on that offer soon because Kansas uh, sports betting is becomes official on September the 1st. That's Thursday. So the opening in college football season will be, um, which kind of is going to lead into my blind nil here. That will be the first day that it operates. Um, So make sure you jump on that bet to get a hundred dollars in free bets. Obviously, that's dispersed in 24, 20, or four twenty-five dollar free bets. Best way to do it, in my opinion. Uh, you got four chances uh, at some free money. I like it. I like it a lot. But uh, my blind nil um, with Labor Day weekend being this weekend, the first day, first week of college football, week one of college football, I should say. Week zero was last week. Got a little bit of a, a little tease uh, with with the Nebraska Cornhuskers losing to uh, the Northwestern. Wildcats, my Northwestern Wildcats got a little taste of it. Oh, good. Um, now we know we know we know football's back when you get to see a little Nebraska choke. Um, sorry, <laughs> I just tried to save it all for the Mizzou podcast I was on. I guess there's still some left over. But um, my question to you guys: What's the best night to watch some football? Saturday night. I love I love Saturday night because 
I love Saturday night college football. I love watching that 730 game under the stars, under the night lights. And then I like the Pac-12 after dark. Yeah. Going to bed with, with football still on on the West Coast is one of the greatest feelings, knowing people are like you're in bed, whatever, and you've had some drinks, you know, maybe you've done some some wagering on the, the draft king app. And you know, you're what you're just gonna go down, close the phone, flip phone back in the day, and go to sleep and wake up. You'll have some some wins. Uh, but I'd say Saturday night is is the best. It, it is the absolute best. You got highlights, you know, and to fill that 30 minute halftime show. And yep. it's just awesome. And you got the whole slate of NFL Sunday and, and hangover wow. day recovery with some five farms, Irish cream in, in your in your coffee to get ready for uh, set Sunday football. You hit like all of them right there in one statement. Nick, that was really impressive. Not really good. Uh, I'm going to I would agree with you. But uh, for the sake of being different, I'm also going to say su- I like Sunday night football. I really enjoy yeah. the Sunday night, especially with the fantasy football aspect of it, because you're playing catch up. You're going through your games and who you have left and who do you have on Sunday night? Who do you have on Monday night? Like, what do you got? At least that's what I'm doing. It's like, hey, do I have a chance here? Like, who do who needs to catch four touchdowns for me to be back <laughs> into this game? <laughs> It's like, is there any chance that Allen Robinson can go for 220 <laughs> yards and three touchdowns to get me within striking distance if my kicker has an all-time type yeah. day on Monday or yeah. something like that? But no, I I, I like Sunday nights, um, especially when there's a good game. I think the worst is when you watch football Thursday. during Sundays and you watch uh, like the noon games at three o'clock and it saves up for this big Sunday night and, you know, those of us with kids, he carves it out and you've got this like perfect scenario. Like I can sit and watch football and then you just get like a complete dud mm. <laughs> matchup and you're just like, this is the worst. Give me a couple teams that can play. Give me some quarterbacks firing the ball around. Let me place a little bet on the over, obviously. So you just root for points and action all the time. But um, I, I absolutely love Saturday. When I was in college Saturday night, there was nothing better than freaking Nick and, uh, Mike Johnson and Jeremy Clary blocking for Sproles and all those guys going out and making plays like that was awesome uh, in college to go see those Saturday night games, but something, something special about Sunday night football. I agree about Sunday night football. Also, it's the best theme song of all of the TV themes. In my opinion, I think it's the best one. Um, also, Amazon's pretty good. I don't know if you heard it. Uh, the new Amazon one's pretty good. Stop, stop, just stop, stop the cap. Stop jockeying for Amazon TV money that's, to come listen, through to the, the Casey score. <laughs> no, no, they had like a no, composer no come up with it. They, they like they like hired an actual composer to come up with it. But uh, no, awesome. what I think is the best night to watch football Tuesday night Maction. You are you are done with football for like a week usually or like Monday night. You know football is done. And you're like man, I gotta wait till Thursday. No, you don't. Tuesday night, there's some action on. You can get a little palate cleanser. You never know what's going to happen in action too. Um, so it's yeah. just like it's your wild card. It's your, it's actually it's probably your shot to your Thursday night chaser. Um, and I think that that's kind of uh, the best way to do it is is really start your week off with the the action. Monday night is the end of the week. Action uh-huh. is the beginning of the week. That's amazing. It's sort of like blind nil Tuesday because you have no idea. <laughs> Any of the players. <laughs> yep. You're like, playing. why am I watching this? Why did I just put money on this game? <laughs> like, I yeah, need yeah. to be invested. <laughs> I need to be invested into this game. You have your finger on the change channel button the whole game, and you don't mm-hmm. do it. I've been there before on some teams. And it's like they always have the fun logos, right? Like the Rockets mm-hmm. and the Thundering Herd and uh, all those people. And, and it's become a hotbed of coaching talent as well, too. Yeah. yeah. Good players come out of there. I mean, Sky Moore was a Mac guy. I mean, you've got some, you've had some very good players come out of the Mac and, and play in some action to Tuesday night games. Lance Moore, John Greco, yeah, play with a bunch of guys from the Mac. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, I like My, that Tuesday for, Mac. That's pretty good. I'm glad somebody came up. I'm glad somebody mentioned that. That's a good one, Tuck. Uh, for the final blind nil segment, mine's probably gonna be boring compared to those two. But um, I was thinking about this earlier because we, I was thinking about the Chiefs Super Bowl season, and you have guys that kind of step up um, that don't expect like you guys like Travis Kelsey, Patrick Mahomes, uh, Chris Jones. You expect those guys to go out and play at a really high level. Uh, but to win something special, you need guys like what we saw from Emmanuel Ogba during the Super Bowl season. Finished with five and a half sacks, but made some key plays. Kendall Fuller. 
made some key plays. I mean, even LaShawn McCoy had some times where he was carrying the ball and did some things for the Chiefs offense. Matt Moore steps in and plays. Well, you need those other guys to step up. And so for this final segment, for this episode of Outside the Trenches, my question for you guys is who do you believe if the Chiefs are going to end up winning a Super Bowl this season, who's somebody that you're going to point at and be like, if it happens, it's because that guy is one of the guys who stepped up and played better than we've seen him play throughout his career. So I, you both look very confused. So I'm going to go. No, first. I'm, I'm super. Right. I know. I know. I'm with, I'm just you got your guy. All right. Oh, pardon. Pardon. Yeah. Nick, you go first though. We'll start with you and then we'll go to talk and then I'll finish it up. But Nick, who's, who's somebody that's got to step up and play better than we have seen them play so far. If the chiefs are going to go deep into this thing and hoist another Lombardi trophy. Are, are we allowed to make comparisons to the New England team based on the field of Rob Gun and Aaron Hernandez? Just on a firm of pure football on the field standpoint. You look at like that sort of dual threat, Travis okay. Kelsey, Jody Fortson. I think, I think if if you're if you're into the fantasy world of you know football fantasy world but not like in that way jody fortson will be a steal i think jody fortson you get him what is it like a sixth or seventh round that seem is that a good time to get a a, a second uh flex if you're in a flex league or something like that or ppr i think jody fortson will, will be that guy i think so because you look at big physical tight end right they're going to be keen on kelsey right they're going to be keen on on the receivers but who are they going to put on Jody Fortson? That's your true mismatch in the red zone, right? You're talking that that 10. Yeah. You know, we know the Chiefs like to throw the ball on the one-yard line, right? They they like to do some, some Pete Carroll shit, uh, you know. <laughs> and so Jody's your guy. And what better way to get your prop bet of Mahomes going over 500 yards than a little two-yard pass to Jody Fortson? I mean, I think, honestly, here's my prediction. Jody Fortson, five TDs this year. If you're willing, if you're going to take Jody Fortson in the sixth round of your fantasy draft, Nick, you can come play in our fantasy league. That's See, that's what I do fantasy because one time I drafted two quarterbacks, so I don't know how to do this thing. I don't. <laughs> Me either. I don't really know. <laughs> Jody Fortson could be one of those guys step up and make some big time catches in high leverage situations. Yeah. I don't know if he's going to have enough targets with everything going around to put up a lot of huge numbers, uh, but he's absolutely a mismatch in the red zone. And we've seen that. And it's just a guy that you root for because Tucker, we were talking about before we recorded uh, that, you know, there are certain guys that you get around in person. And I mentioned Jody Fortson, you had mentioned Juju mm -hmm. uh, Tucker, that when you stand next to Jody Fortson, you're just like, this dude can't be guarded. There's nobody defensively that can match up physically uh, with what that dude can do. So it'd be awesome to see him go out there and make some plays. That's a good one. That's red zone Tucker. Jody. He's gonna have red a lot of red zone Jody. Red zone I've, Jody. I've been I've been tweeting that at red zone Jody out for Jody High Roller. Jody High. Can we get some Jody High Roller stuff in there, right? That's riff raff. Some riff raffs. I know. I borrow riff raff, man. All right, Tucker. Who needs to step up for the Chiefs, or who at the end of this needs to step up? We're talking about the Chiefs winning the Super Bowl. Who's somebody that stepped up for them? So I wrote down three names. The first player that actually came to my head was actually Clyde edwards alaire um, I think that he has to play better than he has for the Chiefs to uh, to kind of ascend to that next level on offense. They're already at a very high level, but it's just it's always about figuring out how you can get to that next level. And I think figuring out getting getting very solid production, having Clyde be healthy for a whole year would be very nice. Um, now that's really tough because running backs miss an average of like two and a half games a season. Um, yeah. So from that position, there's going to be injuries. They have a lot of uh, attrition on their bodies. I think that would be nice. Then I started thinking about, well, you know, maybe it's the defensive side of the ball that you need to see a little bit more. Um, and I thought, Frank Clark playing at a career level, career highs for him would be very nice for this defense. Getting him to get to the quarterback would help this defense a whole lot. And I thought, you know what? If a young guy, if you want to see a young guy step up, Juan Thornhill. I think this is the year that Juan Thornhill steps up and he plays very well. Um, those are the three guys that I immediately thought of when you said, if the Chiefs are going to win the Super Bowl, it's going to be because of these guys. It's going to be because Clyde's stepping up because of Frank, you know, getting back to that level that he's known that he, the reason he came to Kansas city was he had a high level at, at pass rushing, getting him back to that level and one Thornhill having a breakout year. I think if those three guys perform to the level that they can, this chiefs team will be stopped. That's good. I had 
two guys in mind and Thornhill was one of them, but the other one, and I think I've said this before Tucker. So that's why I thought you were going to take it is Willie Gay. Yeah. I think Willie Gay going into his third year, uh, we know what Nick Bolton is. He's going to be the Mike. He's going to be the leader. He's going to be thumping dudes. Uh, he's gotten better in the past coverage stuff that we've talked about a lot, um, but definitely improved in that area and is going out there and making negative plays, uh, but uh, in a good way, you know, plays behind the line of scrimmage. So for Willie Gay, a guy that was coming out of college, was a playmaker. He was a conduit on the field, you know, of that energy between what the crowd is trying to do and what he's doing out on the field with his teammates. Uh, brings the energy, somebody that uh, – it was fun to watch in college in the way that he played with a lot of emotion, uh, go out there and make plays. You could almost tell, and a lot of the coaches talked about it. They seem to be thinking a lot when he's been out on the field and hopefully going into his third year, we've seen him flash at training camp and he's looked really good. And you just look at, you know, in 2020, his rookie year played 269 snaps last year, played 436 snaps. He's going to get some more time. He's going to be counted on to be a dude. And the second level of the Chiefs defense, we've seen what Leo Chanel, if you've watched any of the highlights of him specifically, physical, he's going to take on blocks. He's going to uh, be tracking down ball carriers. We know what Nick Bolton can do. If Willie Gay does the same thing at that second level. And those guys on the defensive line can create some havoc. This is a uh, a recipe for the defense to come together in a beautiful way. And I think Willie Gay is a big part of that. If this guy plays at a Pro Bowl level, I think you're talking about the Chiefs being in the Super Bowl and winning just because uh, I trust that Juan Thornhill is going to step up and have a good season. I expect Justin Reed to have a good season. I expect Frank Clark to be better. I wouldn't I don't want to put that on Frank. He's older at this point. We don't know how many snaps he's going to play. He lost a bunch of weight. It's a good thing, but how does that what does that do for him in November, December? Um, how does losing that weight kind of affect him at that point? Uh, where you hear some of the veterans that always try to lose a little bit of weight. Derek Johnson used to talk about it all the time. You try to lose like three pounds every year. You get older in the league because uh, you get a little bit slower, take a little weight off, stay a little bit faster. But um, expect Frank to have a good season. But if Willie steps up and plays at a Pro Bowl level, uh, I think you're looking at you know a defense that, in terms of scoring, uh, could easily finish in the top 12, top 10 because uh, of that guy, George Karloftis, who we've already talked about. I don't want to put any pressure on rookies uh, to step up and play since we haven't seen it from them yet. But this is a – Clyde edwards is a great one, and for the same reason, going into his third year, just like Clyde, uh, Willie Gay is somebody that uh, I'm excited to see, and I think if he steps up, they're going to be in a sweet spot. Those are fantastic. Those are absolutely fantastic because I love Willie Gay as this run stopper, as this sort of dominant force in the line on, on in that seven man box, six man box. It is him being a, a run stopper and a, being a threat to an offensive lineman to be like, man, you're really going to have to bring your lunch pail for this guy. And then I, I love the hiding in plain sight, the, the Clyde Edwards Hilaire, right? He hasn't doesn't has this you know breakout moment. Right. Where, where he established himself within, you know, the Chiefs fans lore of like, oh, wow, he really stepped it up. This is him doing his thing now. And I think for Clyde, too, I mean, having confidence in the schemes, knowing exactly what to do and making the right mm -hmm. checks at the right moment, split second, you know, when it's like ready, blue, ready, blue, ready. And he's like, oh, moving. OK, we're adjusting. And it's like, hut, boom, he knows how to do that. Right. It's going to be so much better to watch. And yeah, the Reed Thornhill. Mm, those are great. Those are really good. Really I impressive. Think the more you could talk me into Clyde, I think this is really setting up for a great year for Clyde to do that, like remind everybody why he was a first round pick and remind everyone why Patrick Mahomes was excited about him. Uh, his rookie year, kind of give everybody a pass for rookie year coming in. I know he came from LSU and all that, but he's learning a new scheme. Uh, doesn't get a full off season to learn anything. I mean, they spend the entire off season preparing for the draft. They're preparing to run sprints and to look good at the combine and all of those things. Mm -hmm. That's really that next full season. Well, then he gets banged up. He gets injured this year, probably a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. They bring in Pacheco. Everybody's talking about Pacheco a whole lot. Um, a lot of people dogging on him uh, publicly. Uh, as far as what he's done uh, and where he was drafted and that stuff that players can't avoid doesn't mean they have to buy into it all the time, but I think he's really setting up Tucker. I think you bring up a great point. This is setting up for Clyde Edwards Hilaire to kind of have that bounce back, remind everybody why he's good uh, and not to make definitive statements about a player uh, throughout the first two years in the league for the reasons that we just mentioned. I think another guy too, we haven't really talked about is McCall Hardman. 
I think it's another guy that could, if he plays really well, this could be really exciting. And I think there's a few guys on that offensive side of the ball, right? Um, that if you look at there, you're like, wow, this this offense could really be on the next level if this guy steps up and has a really good year. And McCall Harbin had the best statistical year of his career, I believe, last year. Um, a pretty good statistical year. I think over 600 yards receiving, which is not to not to turn your turn your nose at. But um, no, I, I like Willie Gay a lot, and I'm excited to see how he how he plays on the field after he's embraced that kind of vocal leader role. You know, you saw Tyron Matthew lead who was who leave, who was a very big vocal leader on this team. Willie Gay has seemed to kind of take that on as the vocal leader of this team on social media. He's out tweeting, not, not that he has to be like Tyron Matthew on social media, but he's, <laughs> he, he's out there tweeting and, and rallying the guys together. I want to see how he plays now kind of in that role. Listen, he's a beast downhill. Like you, we, we've seen some clips of him from training camp when he was going downhill, filling run gaps. There's no way I, there's no way you can stop him. And, and he's just so fast, so quick, and so good in his reactions that uh, this linebacking core with Nick Bolton and Willie Gay is just going to be a dynamic one-two punch. Throw Leo Chanel in there too when you want to run with three linebackers. Stop it. That's the physical linebacking unit right there that the Chiefs haven't yeah. had, and they they really I think are trying to get back to those early 2010s defenses that were just absolutely nasty. They did, and they learned from Hitch. You know, I think BJ and I had uh, Anthony Hitchens on the show uh, back mm-hmm. in the day and talked about how he had a really shitty culture in Dallas, and he tried to bring a good culture to Kansas City where everyone is for each other. So, you know, I, I think they learned from Hitch. And I didn't want to see him do it, but I'm glad that – I don't want to say I'm glad, but with Hitchens moving on, right, not not getting re-signed or, you know, that I think that he taught them a lot. You know, he imparted wisdom on onto onto these youths, and so everything they do well, I think Hitchens can 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 take credit for that. You know, for guiding. Yeah. Plus, I love Turbo as a nickname for Willie Gay. <laughs> I think between Hitch, Frank Clark, and and Tyron Matthew, if you're listening to the show, you've heard us talk about that. That the way that they changed the culture of that side of the ball was equally as impactful as what Patrick Mahomes did stepping into the offense for a team that went and won the Super Bowl. And and not to completely contradict everything that we just said as far as Clyde Edwards Hilaire, but I do think it's very interesting in looking at the numbers from the Super Bowl championship team uh back in 2019 that the Chiefs didn't have a 500 yard rusher. Damian Williams finished the regular season with 498 yards rushing. LaShawn McCoy had 465, and then Patrick Mahomes had 218. And the same thing in the receiving game. Travis Kelsey had uh, that 1,200 yards. They only had 1,000-yard receiver that year. And we've been talking about how possible is it for the first time in Patrick Mahomes' career that he could have 3,000-yard receivers this season. And who are the most likely like people that could be those? Travis Kelsey is going to be one. Probably Juju would be number two. And then is it going to be MVS? Is it going to be Sky Moore? Is it going to be McCole Hardman? Justin Watson coming out of nowhere? Nick in his sixth round fantasy football pick of Jody Fortson. Does that guy sneak, somehow sneak up and get a thousand yards or two? Two thousand yard tight ends. What a what a year. What a time to be alive. Uh, I'd make him the number one and number two fantasy tight ends in the league. And you got him in the uh, sixth team. round. What a steal. steal. What a steal. Mahomes is throwing the ball 70 <laughs> times a game, and somehow Clyde still gets you know his fair share of carries. But no, I it's interesting looking at the numbers that way. But uh but yeah, I Clyde is a good one. You talk to me to Clyde. If he steps up and plays like a Pro Bowl, can you imagine Clyde Rizalair plays the level that we thought when he was first drafted, uh, before he goes through his rookie year again and then he gets banged up motivated and there were some plays this year tuck i remember the last preseason game a couple of carries or one of the preseason yeah. game uh that he had a couple of carries where i looked and i was who the hell was that like that was clyde i'm like damn he looked quick he looked fast it looked like a burst that we hadn't seen uh from him so far so it was intriguing uh to see what he does and then we'll find out on september 11th when they go face the arizona cardinals and all the dust settles and and all that, but we appreciate everybody for tuning into this episode of Outside the Trenches. And please, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, please go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button, turn on the notifications because we have a lot of content coming your way, somewhere upwards of 16 to 18 chief shows a week uh, here at KC Sports Network. So make sure you're following us on YouTube. And then if you're listening to the podcast, whether it's on Apple or Spotify, please rate and leave us a review. Uh, Please give us a five-star review if you feel so inclined. And then please leave a review. Uh, let other people know why they should support and listen to what we're doing here. And we know there's a lot of places that you can get your Chiefs news. We appreciate being one of them. For Nick's blind nil (laughs) triumph show here. And thanks to our friends at Five Farms and Holiday Distillery. 
For Tucker Franklin and Nick Lecky, I'm BJ Kissel, and we'll see you all next time.